Welcome back to the shop. In this episode, we're going to be restoring an antique chest, also known as an antique mule chest. We've got a great piece in the shop. It's a reproduction of an 18th century, what's called a mule chest. And the purpose of this chest is that in the top, you would store blankets or other sundries. And in the bottom, you would store a commode pot. This was typically found in probably antique homes in the late 18th century, early 19th century, uh, in the bedroom. And this is a great little piece that we that customer found on Facebook Marketplace that they want to get restored. They already have one in their home that is clearly an 18th century, but this is a reproduction. What's neat about this piece is there's actually a stamp on the inside that tells me it's somewhat of a reproduction. It's D.W. Osgood. Furniture and Crockery, number one, Court Street, Haverhill, Massachusetts. Now, don't think I knew all about this piece beforehand. I reached out to someone who I've connected with on Instagram as well as YouTube, and her name is Deirdre Baker. She's Second Wind Vintage. She's uh, based out of New York. If you haven't checked out her channel, you absolutely have to. She has some great pieces that she restores, refinishes, repairs, and sells but she is a wealth of knowledge and she helped me identify this as what's called a mule chest. So I'm gonna take this apart a little bit, give it some repair. It's just gonna be a cleanup. The hinges in the back were broken. Um, there's some splits in the back and I'll take you through that process of how I restore it. So stick around and we're gonna repair this beautiful reproduction mule chest. The first thing you'll notice is that we had these hinges that were on here and definitely an eclectic mix of screws used to hold these hinges in. You can tell they're not the originals. So this is definitely damaged. Um, need to fill these holes because the screws weren't holding and probably build it out a little bit. I'm not sure if these were the original hinges or not because it's interesting that the way they attach. I am going to reuse them. They are bent, so we're going to do a little bit of metal work just to kind of flatten them back out again. But that's going to be step one, is repair these hinge holes. Step two is going to be to repair some of the back. So you can actually see that, first off, that the screws on both ends, the screw holes, are definitely expanded, and we need to fill those back in, otherwise the screws won't hold. Second, if you look closely right here, there's a split. And that was probably from the pressure of the back coming, uh, flipping back and expanding and kind of pressing against the wood. And somebody repaired it with some scotch tape. So we'll actually remove that scotch tape, pry this split open a little bit and jam in some PVA glue and get this closed up. And then we'll fill these holes with uh, some probably 3 16 or quarter inch dowels and then reuse that to attach the hinges. Remember I said that I'm not sure that the hinges were the original. They could be, I can't tell, but they're definitely not notched out. And I think that's why they were notched out at the top, because that way the hinge would sit flush inside. So I'm going to clean out the, and flush off the holes on the lid as well. But step two is going to be repair this back, and then we'll go through and give it a good wipe down and a clean. So we need to fill the screw holes in the top. So I've got these 3 16 dowels that I tapered. We'll let them set and then we'll go work on the back of the mule chest. We're going to clean up this previous repair with scotch tape. I think I've seen everything now using scotch tape to repair it, but it's just scraping right off. I'll probably wipe it with a little bit of acetone. And that'll make it all go away. One of the things I noticed as I was working on the back and kind of clean up that scotch tape is that the back is actually nailed on. So this is all pine. And it's been nailed on. It looks like some square head nails were used. 
and it's starting to pull apart a little bit. And I think that's again from the pressure of the top being lifted. So I used some spreader clamps and I popped it out just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is put some glue down in this joint on both sides, put some pipe clamps on it, and then that will tighten up this back, especially because once the customer opens it, there's going to be more pressure on this back and that nail's not going to hold real well. So I'm going to put some glue down in that hole. It's pretty clean. It doesn't look like there's any glue in there now, uh, but that will help out quite a bit. So I'm just using Type Bond 2 premium glue, and it's usually pretty cold in the shop. So one of the things that I'll do is put my glue in a bottle of hot water, just let it sit in the sink for a few minutes, just to get the viscosity a little bit thinner so that she kind of spreads down through. So we just wanna get some glue here in this joint. We don't need a lot. Just enough to hold it. So I've completed the glue up of the cabinet. So we get the sides glued, as well as this side. We made the repair to the back to fix the split that was there. We also plugged the screw holes from the hinges. So now we'll let this sit in clamps overnight for the glue to cure. And then we'll move on to making the repairs to the top and then get this cabinet back together. These hinges are pretty cruddy. Uh, they don't move very well, they're stiff. So I'm just giving them a lack of thinner bath to clean out any the years of crud that may be built up in there. It looks like there may be some wood filler in there that was used to maybe fix the worn screw holes but i'm going to keep working on this let this sit in the lacquer there a little bit they're steel hinges they don't look to be anything special but we'll get them back operating and once we get them cleaned up we'll put a drop of oil in there just so that it will operate just a little bit smoother
and it's complete. It's wonderful, probably early 1900s reproduction mule chest with a storage for blankets on the top. Some other sundries here in the drawer and for storing an old commode pot here in the base. What do we do to this piece? So we did some minor repairs to where the hinges were, where we filled the old screw holes so the screws would hold better. We put some quarter inch dowels in there that we tapered. We reattached those hinges. But what we also did was we repaired the back where there were some splits from the, the pressure of this top kind of going back. We also did a little bit of a repair to the front of this dresser where it was broken, this drawer where it was broken. And we wiped it down with paint thinner and then gave it a nice coat of butcher's wax. So thanks for following along. It's time to bring this piece back to the customer. Thank you for spending time in the shop with me restoring this wonderful antique mule chest. And I appreciate you tuning into the channel. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing to A.G. Johnson & Son Furniture Restoration.